This is one of the most fascinating places I have ever explored. It is so hard for me to find the correct words to describe the magnificence the landscape irradiates to all your senses. I guess the best description would be a powerful sense of prehistory, of traveling back in time to the place where everything was created, where life started, you feel in the cosmogony. Tourist rapids are located in the Orinoco River, right on the border uniting Venezuela and Colombia. This area is also called the Orinoquia. On the Venezuelan side is the Amazon Estate, and on the Colombian side, the Michada Department. This area is magical. It has innumerable rock outcrops also called Inselbergs, or island mountains, which are made out of platonic Parguasa Rapakivi granite. These rocks are around 1,550 million years old. In the Aturas Rapids Valley, you can find some of the world's largest rock art, thought to be up to 2,000 years old. This petroglyph of a horned snake is about 30 meters long. The predominant nearby terrain is composed of grass savannas, morichalas, and scattered gallery forests fed by springs or water drainages. There are also rivers that drain into the Aturas Rapids, such as the Cataniapo River. The Aturas Rapids are formed where the Orinoco River narrows and becomes shallower as it flows through flat granite outcrops and an enormous amount of rounded granite boulders. It is important to know that there are two ways of viewing an aquatic habitat's climate, the hydrological periods and the climate periods. Here, in the Western Guyana Shield, we have bimodal climate periods, consisting of a dry period and a rainy period. Curiously, the river has a similar hydrological period, but it does not align perfectly with the climate periods. For example, the Orinoco River's water level in this area will rise way before it starts raining. The locals say it is raining down under, which means that it is raining down south in the headwaters of the Orinoco, hundreds of kilometers away. Fish migrations and breeding behavior tend to be influenced by the falling or rising water hydrological periods, while we still think that they're influenced by climate periods. In late September, the water levels in the Orinoco start going down. In some spots, the boulders and sand have lines which show how the water levels have dropped this year. In some places, the water lowers five meters or more. As the water recedes, large, polished boulders start getting uncovered. Rocky islands begin to appear in the middle of the Aturas. These large boulders have a shiny patina or film on their surface making them chrome black.
others have a deep silver chrome which reflect and change color as the day goes by. From chrome blue in the morning to gray chrome at midday to dark black at sundown. In between these boulders you can find sand pockets of thick brownish gravel. Looking through the sand, you can find small pieces of this chrome patina that have somehow chipped off the boulders. I was curious about what the granite rocks looked like inside. Many people believe that the rocks with the black patina are black all the way through. So I decided to look for a small rock that I could carry back to cut it and find out. Alipio and I spent hours looking for a small round polished rock with the silver patina on it. The smallest rocks in the area were as large as us. We searched in various places with no luck until we found three smaller rocks that were stuck under a huge boulder. They were not as shiny as the big rocks, but they did have the patina on them. Some time later, I took the rocks to Deco Marmo, a company near Valencia, Venezuela, that specializes in cutting granite and other decorative minerals. I asked them if they could cut one of the rocks. They looked at it with its black shiny outside and were very doubtful that it was granite. <laughs> they were afraid that their cutting discs could break. <laughs> well, at the end, it was granite. And to our amazement, the inner color of the rock was completely different from its outside. The inside was a gorgeous beige with black stripes and shiny scattered quartz grains. They cut the rock in three angles so it could stand straight and make a great display piece. So this is the Barguasa Rapakivi Plutonic Granite. Whoa, it's really heavy. And this is the cut in an angle. As you can see, this is where it's not polished. I'm gonna show you a place that is not polished. This is the black patina, and this is the granite without polishing. In late February, the driest time of the year. The water is at its lowest level. In some of the now uncovered islands, you will find amazing pre-Columbian petroglyphs that were carved into the rocks over 2,000 years ago. In the rainy period, these islands disappear until the next hydrological period. This area was a meeting hotspot of many ethnic human groups. It is possible that these indigenous people came to these islands because they are great fishing spots. Nowadays, local fishermen come with their families for extended periods of time to catch fish on these small rocky islands, 
just like their ancestors did thousands of years ago. They built shacks made out of tree trunks and plastic sheets to protect themselves from the elements. Their most sought out fish are large catfish, payaras, and large paku. The Orinoco River's water in this area is not very clear. It has a light brown tinge, making it impossible to see anything that is more than 10 centimeters deep. Underwater photographs taken in silty rivers do not come out that nice. So we usually bring a jug of clear water, capture the fish, and place them in a specimen aquarium filled with the clear water. Specimen aquariums are very handy in these situations where the water is silty or when the current is too strong or dangerous. We also place a ruler in the specimen aquarium for future scientific reference. Fishermen are usually looking for large fish. But one of the most famous fish from the Aturas Rapids is very small. It is a small catfish called the Blue Phantom Pleco. The Blue Phantom's bodies are dark green covered with light green spots. These spots are sometimes very bright and create a nice visual contrast against their dark body. These plecos live right on the Aturas Rapids rocks and are fished by the thousands. They are then exported worldwide for the aquarium hobby trade. The blue phantoms feed on periphyton, which is a mixture of silt, algae, and microorganisms that live and grow over the flat granite outcrops, which are called lajas by the locals. The fish attach themselves to the substrate with their specialized sucker mouth. Blue phantoms are fished by dragging a net over the smooth laja. It is incredible to think that the blue phantom plecos and so many other fish eat, breed, and live on the submerged petroglyphs after they disappear underwater in the rainy period. The aquatic plants in the Aturas Rapids have adapted to the fast current and water cycles. The Potostemasia genus of plants are the most common. They form a tight grip on the smooth rock surface as they grow, so they are not dragged by the strong water current. They do not grow deep, as sunlight does not penetrate the silty water. They grow only a couple of centimeters below the water level. One of the strangest plants I have ever seen is found in these rapids. They are trees belonging to the Myrtaceae family, most likely of the Cedium genus. This is the genus that includes the guava fruit trees. This plant right here looks like a small tree. It actually looks like a bonsai. It is a very particular plant. The locals here call it um, small guava tree. And what is interesting about it is that it spends nine months out of the year underwater in the rapids, in the Orinoco River rapids. When the 
dry season starts and the water levels go down, it comes out in the dry and uh, it starts it's, it starts throwing out some leaves. You know, the, the leaves start growing and uh, it turns green. And after in two or three months, this the water levels are going to rise again and the rapids are going to come here very strong rapids and it, it loses all its leaves and it spends nine months underwater in the dark and you can see how the tree trunk the, the trunk is extremely hard it, it has the flow of the water you can see how the water has shaped it and molded this actually gives out a small fruit it's like kind of black fruit it's really acid fruit it's like bitter tart but it's absolutely amazing it, it spends nine months out of the year underwater in rapids uh, the water rises around uh, here around six meters you can see all the the, the the rocks have are polished because of all the the speed of the water the with all the particles and the dust they it gets sandblasted and they this tree gets sandblasted for nine months and after it comes out it's so beautiful it's green the leaves are small very nice leaves and the tree trunk is spectacular it looks like it was like a thousand years old the riverbanks of the Aturas rapids have some small inlets sections where the water slows down in the dry period, creating magical water reflections. Here, you can find spots where the river sand accumulates. Up high in the riverbank, near the gallery forest, the thinnest, lightest colored sand is found, resembling a fine ivory colored powder. At the banks of the Orinoco, in the dry season, as the water levels go down, uh, what is left behind in the bank is this beautiful off-white sand. It has a color which resembles uh, ivory. It's an off-white, it's not very, very white as probably the Atabapo sand. It's really off, it's a little bit more ashy. It's, uh, it's the color of this area. Because every area in the Orinoco has a different color of sand, depending on whatever it's the silt that is coming down or the minerals that get included in the sand that get all worn down and eroded. So here at the Amazon State, near the rapids, Orinoco River Rapids, you can find this off-white sand. Then, as you walk down towards the river, the sand gradually turns coarser. This is what is left behind. And the banks, as you go deeper, or uh, I don't know, if you go 20 meters down in the dry season towards the edge of the river, and you find uh, sand that is coarser, it has a bigger grain. This is a really thin grain, see right here? Really thin, and it's spectacular. Simply amazing. Down near the low water level, the substrate is very thick with a browner, darker color to it. And then as the river goes down, the, the, the level of the river goes down in the dry season, it uncovers this beautiful amber sand. It has a lot of specks of quartz, uh, silica sand, it has other, other materials, probably granite, but it gives it a beautiful tan color. There's, there's no dirt in it. There's barely any silt in it, and it's simply amazing. The flora and fauna in the area are all influenced by the climate and hydrological periods. In the rainy period, when the Atouris Rapids Islands disappear underwater, the savannas and the gallery forests flood. Thank you. 
The fish move into these flooded aquatic habitats to eat and reproduce. At sundown, the vultures and other birds look between the rocks for stranded or dead fish, or the leftovers that the fishermen have left behind. The natural cycle continues over and over again. The Aturus Rapids are magical.